safe on Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Grammys. There's no red carpet because they're home in their jammies. From Melrose Place to Broadway to Janeway and her crew. Let Seth and James bring all the stars to you. Anywho. They're entertaining everyone, so who's going to grouse? Just sit right back and you'll hear some tales on Stars in the Hi, everyone. I'm Hi, everyone. J- I'm James Wesley. I'm Seth Trudeski, and this night is dedicated to James and Liz Calloway. <laughs> That's right. Myself, Liz Calloway, her husband, Dan Foster. She's been pressuring us for months to do not slanting. She's such a super fan, like so many Seth, super fans Seth, there's out no, there. no pressure needed because... Well, he's obsessed, too. I'm just saying, this is like the SCTV night. We're like, I like we're he knew I was obsessed. <laughs> That's James right. Is obsessed with the show. Liz is obsessed. We have so many fan comments already. There's so many fans That's out there. From all over the world. Now, what is Stars in the House? I know we have not. Oh, who cares stars about in Stars in the House? Exactly. This is about not. You knew I was going to say that, didn't you? <laughs> we ha- we are here to raise money all through this amazing TV show. That's stars right. in the House is something we began in March when everything shut down to help artists because right now, and by the way, not just artists, but basically no one's working. People who support TV. the artists. Yeah. So now the Actors Fund, if you don't know, will help. Yes, it helps actors, singers, dancers, but it helps everyone behind the scenes too. Wig makers, makeup designers, everybody front of house, ushers, house managers, everybody right. who works on TV and film, the the caterers, the, the guy that drives you to the set, everybody can go to Actors Fund and say, I can't pay my rent, I can't pay for my groceries, I can't pay my health insurance, and many people are doing that. The Actors Fund is doling out literally millions of dollars yeah. because most people live check to check when you're in show business. You don't you don't have long running shows like yeah, that. Yeah, not sliding is the exception to the rule. Yeah, you live check to check, <laughs> and people are really struggling. So, through the generous donations of our fans, well, not our fans, but fans of Stars in the House, have been watching since March. We've been raising five, ten, twenty-five dollars by. It adds people. up. And how many? How much have we raised so far? We are up to five hundred and twenty-six thousand nine hundred and thirty-five dollars raised for the Actors Fund. So, if you need help, if you're someone in the show business, any aspect, no matter where you live, not just New York, California, no matter what you do related to show business, go to ActorsFund.org. If you are watching tonight, and show like, business, by the way, we include like dancers, opera, opera symphonies, wedding singers. Yeah, no matter exactly. what you do, you can people who work at Disney World who have been laid yeah, off that are in. This- in those shows, people who work the lights, all the sound, all of that stuff, you know, you've heard there have been so many layoffs. Yeah. Includes people, them too. People that comb the fur, like, you know, <laughs> the point is if you need help, you go That's to right. actorsfund.org. If you can give some help, please donate at startsinthehouse.com or you can text fund 2020 to 56512. The exciting part is you're going to get a receipt. Forward your receipt to donations at starsinthehouse.com, and then we will send that to one of our Knots Landing stars, and they will actually read your donations over the air in full character. I knew you were going to say So maybe alcoholic <laughs> style, maybe they want to have an affair with you. They're going to add a lot of subtext to your donations. So send in those receipts, and the, the minimum donation is five bucks. You can go as high as you want, and it's we're really thrilled that so many people have shown up already. They're, the comments are like, Usually the comments begin once we begin the show. We already have tons of comments before the show's even begun. That's right. Now, what else do we have to do before we well, begin Well, we want to say last night, uh, Hunter Foster's Red House Art Center from Syracuse, they took over Stars in the House. It was fantastic. There were so many people that donated their website. It sounds like a stereotype or a cliche. Literally crashed. So The Red House, the Red House uh, website crashed with donations. That's right. So if you want to give to the Red House uh, Arts Center in Syracuse because you loved the show last night, Go to their website. It's back up. Back working. We, we so, also, by the way, if you support these local theaters, people don't know you, when you yeah. support the local theater, you're supporting all the businesses around you. You're supporting the restaurants, the hotels, the parking garages. It's not just singing and dancing, which is great, but it's supporting an entire downtown industry. Sorry, go on. No, that's okay. We also want to tell you that our website arts it's on stars in the house, but if you want to go to artsactionfund.org slash arts vote, Americans for the arts is arts action fund. Well, by the way, if you just yeah. go to stars in the house, the link is right there. It has everything there. So anything regarding registration dates uh, for voting for New York. Tuesday, oh. Yeah. Today's the last day for registering in New York. Tuesday is the uh, last day to register in New Jersey, but all the information is there. State for early state. voting. All of that stuff is there. And tomorrow night, in case I forget at the end of the show, because I'll be hyperventilating. So I'm so excited for tonight is Coastal Disturbances. I believe that it was Annette Benning's first Tony nomination. She's not only starring in it again, but directing it. And she got so many people. I, I, I'm going to leave people out if I start it saying, you can Annette, go on the website. Annette Benning, full production. She contacted us. Annette Benning cast all of her starry friends. That's They're right. going to do the actual show here tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern. And That's of course, right. feel free to donate. She's a big wig at the Actors Fund. She loves the Actors Fund. So That's right. how about the Actors and Fund that night too? But, see, but do a lot of donations tonight too. 
and and we love Annette Benning. So tonight, else to say? No, I think to that's it. I think we've we're let's get going here. Okay, it's very exciting. Um, if you have any questions, we you know throughout the show, you can post them in the comments. We can ask the cast as well. That's right. Um, okay, so Nuts Landing, fourteen seasons, three hundred and forty-four episodes. I literally began Seth watching it. I figured out while I was in middle school and it was, it was on that the air. You don't for, need to hear. No, but it was on the air for so long. I realized it's the only TV show that I watched continuously from being middle a child, teenager, <laughs> child, teenager, a uh, past my teens into my twenties, like past graduating from college by several years. That's how iconic this that TV is show is. Show, man. That is a hit show. Um, so let's oh, actually, because oh, I didn't do have, this we before. Have we have a fancy introduction. Fancy introduction. It's going to bring back memories, people. Music brings back the most memories of anybody. And oh, smell. trivia question yes. for people, because anyone knows that, you know, Knott's Landing was on a cul-de-sac. Does anyone, any fan know what the name of the street is? Put it in the comments. Wisteria the, Lane. It was not Wisteria Lane. Um, but I want to show this is really six fun. Six comments just went up. Six com seven, eight. Where is the name? Seth's mic is very low. Really? Seth, get it together. Um, All right. We're going to show this right here. It'll bring back memories. Our intro. It's a great way to start it. Yay. Any memories? Any comments? All right. We're going to bring on Joan Van Ark, otherwise known as Valley Newing. Hi, Joan. Hello. <laughs> nice I want to frame this. I guess the framing is okay. It's a busy background, but it's a busy diva, too. <laughs> now, does that give me first billing? Because I didn't like the lineup that we just saw because I was <laughs> last. Because I'm I was going in reverse. Maybe you're going from last to first now? Yes. Oh. It's only fair. Okay, all right, I'll go with that. Because everything on the show was always alphabetical, so now we're going in reverse alphabetical as I bring you up. So in turn, we're going to bring out your co-star, your husband, Ted Shackelford. Yay. Hi, Ted. Hi. <laughs> Ted, I love your yellow piazza. It's beautiful. My yellow piazza. In the back of you. How did you get to see his yellow piazza so soon? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> That's not a euphemism. I mean, literally, <laughs> the back of your walls. People, it's a G-rated show. Okay, continue. And um, part of the love triangle of the, of the three of you, Ms. Donna Mills. Oh, there she is, <laughs> waiting to see the yellow piazza. Oh, <laughs> you don't have to wait long. You don't have to wait long. It's ready to go. <laughs> it's all yours. <laughs> so, so, of course, the, the woman who put this all together, Donna, Joan, and Ted, Michelle Lee, not having, having, wifi she's problems. having some Wi-Fi issues, so she'll technical, be technical technical difficulties. Technical difficulties, so she'll be joining us. But my God, there is you didn't sabotage her Wi-Fi, ladies. I know there's a lot of drama on the show. Is there any Wi-Fi sabotage going on? I need to know about. Would I do a thing like that? <laughs> okay, you just answered my question. Thank you. <laughs> so. When I was going back down memory lane, which I had so much fun doing the last couple of days, I had forgotten that, well, I knew that Knott's Landing was a sequel, but it really wasn't because it was David Jacobs' idea first to do Knott's Landing. But I didn't before really- Dallas. Before Dallas. Before Dallas. Yeah, process. before Dallas. Yeah, because David Jacobs created Dallas and Knott's Landing. But Joan, I, you tell us the story about how you got the job because you were- you were living in New York and you didn't no, really no, do it. What's no, the story? No, I was living here because okay. we, we were doing knots at the time. Oh, I always do that where I look at you and I got to look here. Sorry. Um, but uh, we were already filming knots. It had already started. And I was doing Estee Lauder, all their commercials, voiceover, Estee Lauder hair. Estee Lauder lips, the Estee Lauder woman. And they, so I was doing those voiceover commercials and they fly me back to New York 
to do two days worth of uh, commercials with the 30s and the 60 seconds and on and on. Put me up at the Plaza Hotel. It was very chic. I used my per diem to buy clothes that I loved from Bendel's, which was downstairs. Bottom line is um, they asked me on the fly quickly offered me this part of Lucy's mother, Gary's wife or ex-wife at that time. Um, and I said, oh, I can't possibly do it. Uh, I've got to be in New York to do two days of Estee Lauder, whatever. My husband talked me into it and said, somehow, some way you have got to do it. You get on a red eye, you'll, you'll handle it. And sure enough, I tried to do both. I did do both. And here we are. Wow. Good. Thank you, Mr. Van Ark. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I think Michelle may be working. I see a lot of looking through her glasses. Michelle Lee, should we Michelle bring you Lee? on? All right. Let's see if it works. One, One two, two, three. three. Michelle Lee. Fingers. Yay. Oh, Wait a minute. Still can't hear her. But she looks beautiful. She looks beautiful. Can't hear a damn thing. Wait, Michelle Lee, with the biggest belt in the world, we can't hear your voice. You look stunning. I'll translate what she's saying. Joan, you look beautiful. Ted, your piazza has never been more yellow. This will be great for our serious XM listeners. Exactly. When this goes on the road, oh my God, when we're on tour. This is the most bizarre thing because to, to not hear Michelle when you see her. Never happened. That's out of body, yeah. Out of body she began. She began in silent film, so she's going back to her roots. <laughs> and Ted's just happy in his yellow piazza. We all are. All right, Michelle, we're gonna wait for you to work it. Poor Michelle. Okay, we're gonna. Okay, we're gonna. We write, we'll write you in private chat. You go. Okay, you go somebody's gonna. Yeah, okay. So, Ted, I was reading that when when Gary and. Valine Ewing were first on Dallas. You weren't actually the first Gary Ewing. I didn't realize that. No, I just David, always thought you'd you was Gary. Yeah, David Ackroyd did it. He did it. Uh, it was a two part thing that you did. That you did with it, right, John? Uh, no, he did some ep uh, an episode. I well, no, it was okay. It was two or like two episodes. He was filming at Universal actually, uh, uh, doing a, a long form when they used to do those. So he wasn't available. He was doing he was doing a lot of women because I, I yes. was doing a lot, and I knew David from uh, daytime back in New York. And I I ran into him on the lot, and he said he said they wanted to do this soap opera thing at night, but he was gonna, he was thinking about it, and then he started to stay with Little Women, and they recast it. I think that's wow, the story. that lucked out for you, An amazing yes, role. Yeah. <laughs> yes. A quick yes, and what? Fourteen years later. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. You never know how long these things will last. And and Donna, I read that you were actually. Is it true that you weren't really being seriously considered for the role of Abby because of your like? I don't know. It was they didn't see you as the type. Is that true? Yeah, because before that, I'd only played like Goody Two Shoes and the victim. You know, the person who always got you know hit on or you know raped or something so i knew that they wouldn't they said oh we know her she's great blah 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 but i knew that they wouldn't really consider me so i insisted on going in and reading for them wow well look at this little clip here that michelle lee um michelle sent. Lee sent the most amazing oh my gosh ever talk about talk about they could not have been more wrong because no one could have been more perfect for the role than you no i like my marriage, I assume you like yours. Our lovemaking has nothing to do with that. Because if I ever have to make a choice between love and money, money's gonna win every time. Simple enough? Couldn't be simpler. Good. <laughs> That's some, so things, great. some things never change. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> By the I, way, poor I, poor I, Michelle, I, I, while she's trying to get on, look at look at these comments, Donna. A silent Karen, Abby's dream come true. Uh, <laughs> Abby, Abby got rid of Karen. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Hey, Joan, you got a I you actually got a sabotaged her. Hey, do you mind sabotage? Joan, <laughs> someone said, Joan Van Ark, are you still running marathons? Uh the last one I did was a couple, three years ago. 
uh, the LA Marathon. I've done 14 of them. Uh, I want to do another one. Um, I, I've even done Boston, which I'm very, very proud of. I still do 10 to 12 miles a day, which puts me away, but it's not a, it's not a full out run. It's not my seven minute mile. It takes me twice as long because I walk jog now, but I, I need that that time. But yeah, that's just running. I don't know. It's just so much a part of me and so much. Uh, it's my shrink. It's my chance to flush the toilet, so to speak, and, and get the negativity out. And, and I, I really I'd have to do it every day. So and you do it in heels and it's OK. I do it. What? Pardon me. In heels. And back yes, I do heels. And um, whatever clothes of Nicolette Sheridan's that I was able to sneak out of the wardrobe department before we wrapped, uh, a lot of Nicolette Sheridan's uh, wardrobe. <laughs> so <laughs> heels, heels and that, yes. And lashes. And uh, lashes, the whole nine yards, yes. We have um, our data. We can start we, well, yes, hold on. Uh, it looks like David Jacobs is coming on. Before David comes on, I love this comment from Tom Hall. Abby was the first time a sexy troublemaker was brought on to spice up a show. People often overlook this and say it was Alexis on Dynasty or Amanda on Melrose Place, but Donna did it first and best. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> All right, I see David Jacobs, the creator of Knots Landing, and he's he's clapping, so I know that he's ready to go. So we're gonna bring him on right now. One, two, three, David Jacobs. Yay! <laughs> oh, he has the same sound system as Michelle Lee. All right, is your I'm sound sorry. working, David Jacobs? You look cute. Yes, I can hear you beautifully. <laughs> I can hear you. I can hear everybody. Okay. Can you hear me? It's just a little bit on the I soft can side. You. Can you hear him, Donna? Very soft. It's very soft, very David. Soft? How about if I talk louder? Does that work? Or do... No, it should just turn it up. Why don't it's you, better. David Jacobs? We've got we've got We're a lot hook of you up with our tech person with yeah. with David Katz and get you. So we want you to to be on here so you, everyone can hear your brilliance. All right. So we're going to say goodbye for a minute while David Katz, Seth, you go talk to David. We'll continue because so many fan questions. So while we're waiting for David Jacobs to get it there, Lee from Israel wrote what? on Instagram. Do you know Lee Where? from Israel? No, but my God, from Israel. I mean, this is going globally, so to yes. speak. Yes, it's the internet, the new thing. I know. No, it's no, but I mean, what time is it there? Four in the morning? Probably. Two in the morning? They're fans, man. They're fans. Joan, everywhere. for these, for the fans that are, they'll stay up. It's live. There's the excitement. They're, hard, they're hardcore, hardcore. So here's the least question. I love it. It's for all of you. What? Because I do know the show really well. What was the hardest scene that you had to play, and what was the funniest? Joan, you first. Oh my God! Do I get a prize? <laughs> um, funniest. <laughs> Uh, oh God, I had to cook crawdads once for the twins. I remember that was a storyline, but I think we got that changed just in time. Uh, funniest, God. Well, Kevin, Michelle, and I were in a, a three-way scene in the kitchen where most of the knots landing, uh, you know, roll your sleeves up, hard work was done. And uh, we wanted to end it with uh, hear no evil, speak no evil, see no evil. So all three oh, of us- no. had uh, no, what, what tell me help help ted what was it we were in kevin's oh now i've lost ted's sound you were in kevin's something kevin's office kevin's office it was somewhere the three-way scene where we were all we ended up the scene d subtly trying when they said cut we were all in position of hear no see no speak no evil which if Abby were in it, couldn't have, she couldn't have done it because she has <laughs> spoken nothing but evil. So that, that wouldn't have worked, but, but okay. So it was Kevin's office. I don't remember that part. Only, only 40 years ago. Okay. Donna, what was the hardest scene for you and or the funniest? Well, probably the, the hardest was the Olivia drug story because there were so many levels to that and there, and it went so deep and it did yeah. so much um, that, you know, it, it took a lot, you know, took a lot, bringing out a lot of stuff. So, so that was probably the hardest. And the funniest I think was 
just walk, going off the show singing, don't worry, be happy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a brilliant way to say goodbye to Abby. And uh, I thank David Jacobs for that to this day. Well, it just so happens because Michelle Lee, for all of you, put together, a ma we've never, we've done over 200 shows. I think we're approaching a thousand guests. We've never had a guest who isn't here <laughs> provide so many clips because she sent so the- organized. It's so organized because she knows with YouTube that you can't make them more than 30 seconds and all of that. She put together, Donna Mills, a great 30 second clip of, of exactly what you're talking about for your hardest scene. It's, oh, really? it's brilliant. Here it is. Give it to me. <laughs> Over here. Don't be! Go to bed, Brian. You stand right there and don't you move. You think I'm not gonna know. I wasn't doing anything. I was just silk pajamas. <laughs> of course. It's very real. It's 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 a very real scene, beautifully written and beautifully acted. Thank you. Thank you. You know, it was very impactful to a lot of people. And a lot of people wrote to me and said how it helped them with their child's drug problem and they they really identified with it. So it was very meaningful to me and it and it and I really loved having the opportunity to do it. Well, you know, Don, I mean that's speaking of real issues, one of the things I love Dallas, but I but not slanding. There was, it's not like you didn't have poor people who lived in that cul-de-sac, but it was more middle class, quote unquote, issues. And I would say the two that stuck out the most to me was the one that you just described, Donna, and then Ted for Gary's drinking. I don't know if it. I mean, I I my stepfather was an alcoholic, and I just realized talking to Seth earlier when we went to the grocery store, I said, not slanting, I started watching when he was still living in our house. And so it, I was seeing represented on the TV screen what was going on in my own house. I mean, how, I mean, what was it, um, what was it like for you? And those had to have been some of the hardest scenes, but I don't want to put words in your mouth, Ted Shackelford, but did, I'm sure you got feedback from fans regarding that storyline. Yeah, they were pretty. They were pretty intense. I, we, um, one of the scenes we did. I think it was in the jail, and then there was another scene I was in um, in detox, and I think Abby comes to see me. Anyway, um, the director, um, who I can't remember right now because I'm old, um, he convinced me to stay up all night and, and shoot it that way, uh, and. It was kind of an interesting exercise, but it was it was difficult, I have to say, and, and interesting as an actor. Was there a certain fan encounter or letter that stood out to you? Because I don't know if I had heard about Alcoholics Anonymous until literally not slanting. I mean, it wasn't just like drama for the sake of drama. I mean, you, you know, there was like a solution on the other side of AA. Did you ever get a fan letter that stuck out to you? Or no. no. Okay. Oh, wait a minute, Michelle Sorry. Lee. Michelle Lee is ready okay. to go. Michelle Lee, are you ready to go? I Michelle see Lee, Nadi. Michelle Lee, Michelle Lee in the house. Cross fingers. One, two, three, Michelle Lee. Hi. Yay! Hi. This is nerve wracking. I'm going to make you bigger, so to speak. Michelle, it's yeah. so good to see you. If you weren't here, would you? We were just going to show your photo if you weren't here. <laughs> there she is in business without really trying. Yeah, exactly. Hi, guys. I'm so sorry I'm late. I, I usually, I'm never late. You're, you're so organized. I can't believe what has happened. You know, I am back on my uh, iPad. No, my computer. I've switched. Oh three things already and i don't even know if i have makeup anymore but i want to say hello to number one to everybody there my my guys and i want to say hello to james and seth 
and Mr. Benacasa. Yes. <laughs> and so, I was so everybody. Huh? I just heard your phone ding. We already have a whole list of donations that I just sent you for to read. Oh, it's so, so good talking to you again. Read all the donations that just texted you. Someone texted you. Hold on. Yes. Where would I find that text? On your phone. On my put phone. On, put on the glasses. Michelle, we see you coming soon. That was from you. No, that's the private chat. Go to the your actual phone number. <laughs> You're making Joan Van Ark laugh. So that's oh, wait a minute. My hard copy. She makes me feel better about myself. Okay, that's look real good if I, you know, I know. Someone asked me a question, right? Not Ooh. really. I said, <laughs> You're, pretending. You're pretending someone asked me a question. I don't even know. Michelle Lee's right on my notes, right? Right now. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Go to my regular phone. Where's your phone? Did you just oh, have a phone? Hello. This is Michelle Lee. Who is this? Do you have anything for me? Oh, please, we're on the air. This is okay. clearly live. Yeah, okay. <laughs> clearly live. So, I, um, let me tell you, I have to ask the girls because I can't see now. Donna, yeah, do I look as good as you. No. <laughs> so. Oh. I have you look better. You look better than me. Okay. Joan. Yes. Oh, Joan. Yes. Oh. oh, Joan. Did Donna tell you she's wearing sequins? Yeah, and I had to change from guy. I was in the most fabulous casual outfit, and suddenly absters in glitter. So we all you know, scrambled through our closets and grabbed the, the first glitter that we saw and threw it on ourselves with a push-up bra. And now, and here we are. Here we are. I was told that David Jacobs is also having trouble. So with he his, is trying to get with through. his push-up bra or what? Not <laughs> push -up bra. He has a wonder bra. All right, yeah. we're gonna show some clips. James, show some amazing Michelle oh, yeah. well, Lucas. Uh, you know what? I I'll, I'll, I'll send like donations to Donna Mills. Pardon? So Donna, I'm gonna send you because okay. we got these amazing donations. So I'm gonna send them to you For right people now. People to read out loud. So we'd like you to. Oh my gosh. So we'd yeah. like you to read these donations. You're gonna get them on your cell phone, but you basically have to read them as Abby. <laughs> so one eyebrow raised, subtext, sexual subtext. <laughs> um okay, I don't have it yet. Oh, there we are. Okay. Yeah. Oh goodness. I know. Okay. There's so many. There's so many fans. Okay. Oh, God bless them. God so bless. Blair. Blair in California. In honor of Kevin, that is so nice. A hundred dollars. Oh, that is beautiful. You, that is beautiful. Oh, who's this? Debbie. Debbie. Debbie from <laughs> California. Um, thank you, Debbie. Thank you for your contribution. Cheryl. Cheryl from Pennsylvania. In honor of Betsy Palmer. Oh, Jamie, Jamie from California. Thank you, Jamie. Mm -hmm. Michelle Lee, did you get the donation? You want to take over from Donna? Yes, I will tell you she read half of mine, and that's who she is. You know what? It's all about timing. It's all about timing. Okay. You got to watch right. out for Abby. I can be pregnant by now. Okay. Blair from California. Did you read Blair? Yes. <laughs> Start with Mark I got all hers. You know, a lot of people. Go down to Mark. A lot of people are calling because of Kevin Thompson. Um, and that was from Blair also. And a lot of people are, are talking about our loss. Very, very wonderful man, as we all know. But do you have any more, Donna or Joan? Did you get even one? No, I didn't get, first of all, my cell phone was probably in the bathroom under the toilet or something. I don't, I didn't even have, I, were we supposed we're to have? No, Joan, we, we sound like every 10 minutes a batch of donations. Michelle's not making it a competition, which it's not. 
but it makes it look more hilarious. Yeah, Donna, guess what, Michelle Lee? Donna, continue. Donna, you knew what you were doing. Michelle, we're muting you. We don't like the chat to pass. Donna, hit it. Okay. Uh, but do they? How do they know our cell phone number? How did? Do, do no, we do. They they, they forward them to stars in the house, and then we forward you. Put your cell in the private chat, and then we'll send you the next batch. Okay, you Jack, can you help me with that? There's okay. no okay. cell phone among this cast at all. <laughs> what is it? There's no jealousy among this cast. <laughs> no, I can no, tell. no, not at all. Okay, okay, we're going with the next person. Yes. I don't know where my cell phone is. From Massachusetts. Mark from Massachusetts, thank you. He's a faithful fan, and Abby loves him. <laughs> <laughs> David from Florida. Mm, love Florida. Thank you. Thank you for your donation. John from Texas. On behalf of my sisters, Cecile and Kathy, $100. Aww. Really nice. These are, these are big donations. This is really, oh. Yay to you for making this happen. Ricky Coombs and Seth, who love non-slanding, $250. Wow. I love Ricky and Seth. I know them. Yay. Yeah. Um, before, oh, God, I'm so out of it. Michelle, Lee, uh, I to ask you something, okay? Uh, because I know you were showing some clips and whatever. But did you show any of the gags? Not yet. Because okay. no. they're all in 30 seconds or less in clumps. Oh, you, you gave us them. We've only shown two of your brilliant clips so far. I know. Well, they're going to kill me because I actually told a story through the clips of each relationship. Okay. They can't show everything, obviously. We can show some. Well, you know what? what you actually, do you want to? Why don't you set up the Kevin Dobson? Because you sent some really beautiful clips. You just mentioned Kevin. Are we allowed to show all of Kevin's scenes? Okay. Yes. Oh, scene, I should say. Okay. I'm holding up my Diet Coke to Kevin, who has done extraordinary work on our show. Okay. Where did Ted go? He's off. His uh, um, video was crazy. Because we so adored and loved him, sweetest man in the world, most talented. We have a piece of film here of one of his most incredible pieces of work. And I'm so happy you can show it. You got it. Right, Actually, right hold on, I'm sorry. Yeah. You wanna just set up the scene? Just because people okay. are happy to show. All right, I will. One of the reasons Knott's Landing was so well accepted and went far beyond many other shows, including Dallas, who knew? Um, is because we were allowed to do so many different things on this, what they call a soap opera. We were allowed to do comedy, straight out comedy. We were, we were allowed to do serious things that were, hap that were happening at the time in the world. And one of the things that we touched base on was abuse, okay? So there was a storyline where there was abused child that Kevin knew he was being abused. He was hiding it, the kid was hiding it. This is a scene where finally Kevin, as Mac, addresses the problem with the kid. Your dad hit you. You don't understand. When I was six years old, I was running through the house and I knocked over a lamp and it broke. And my dad beat the hell out of me. He just didn't spank me. Hit me with his fist. Gave me two black eyes, Jason. I was six years old. It's hard for me to, to say out loud that that he abused me. And, and it was wrong. And he was wrong. And not to say it at all makes it even worse. But Jason, you don't have to live the rest of your life denying it the way I have, all you have to do is tell me that you don't want to go in there. Tell me to take you someplace else, kid. Just tell me to take you someplace else. Brilliant work. Incredible work. And I'm going to say something about my lovely co-stars here, I will tell you, in looking through some of these uh, pieces of clip, clips, 
I am so incredibly thrilled to see your work again. You, the two of them, I have to say, I'm a little emotional because of Kevin, but Donna, there is no, she played the bitch witch. We know that. I saw so many things with Donna where every beat, everything she does, whether it's comedy or drama, is so right there. She has skills you won't believe. And so, so much of the time, that kind of a role kind of gets dismissed. So I have to tell you, oh, brilliant. This one on top, da 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 jump and arc on top. <laughs> wherever the hell you are. Um, Joan Van Ark, there is a piece here. I don't know if you've played it yet. There's a piece here. First of all, she's an extraordinary actress and a lot of people know that. She graduated from Yale, the second, and I, you can toot your own horn for a second. Oh, not at all. I, I'm proud that I followed Julie Harris. Julie was the first actress to go to Yale uh, Drama School, School of Drama, straight out of high school. And I was the second person some whatever, 20, 30, whatever years later, uh, to follow Julie as uh, a, a high school graduate going into the Graduate School of Drama at Yale. Um, and when David Jacobs and Michael Feilerman, the two producers of Knott's Landing, said, we've found someone to play your mother. and uh, I thought, oh my God, it's Zsa, Zsa Gabor. I'll bet you anything. And of course, <laughs> it wasn't. It was the gorgeous, astonishing, amazing Julie Harris. And I just let out a scream and, and danced down the hall after hearing that. I, I can't tell you. Wait a minute, Joan. So you're saying that Julie Harris, who I read, is it true that you first met her when you were a teenager? Yes, I did actually. I, I, uh, my father was a photographer writer for Life magazine. My mother was also a writer and they took me into Denver. Because, uh, we lived in Boulder, Colorado at that time uh, and uh, took me into Denver where Julie was doing, I believe it was The Warm Peninsula, a play, which I'm sure she collected a Tony for because she holds the record for the most Tonys, as far as I know. I think so. Yeah. Five actress. for Best Actress in a five, Play. Yes, Five for Best Actress in a Play. Yeah. And um, I went in to interview her like the young uh, starlet or the young actress interviewing the star. And uh, at the end of the interview, uh, she was so generous with her time and uh, it was amazing. And at the end of the interview, she said, so what are your plans? And I said, well, I... I want to study drama. That's all I, I care about. That's my eat, drink, sleep drama and acting as we, as all of my cohorts know too much drama. But uh, bottom line was uh, they, uh, she said, let me write a, a note or a letter to the Dean. The Dean answered her by saying, uh, we would like to meet Joan. We'd like to talk to her. My father and mother drove me from Boulder, Colorado, back to New Haven, Connecticut, I met the Dean and he presented me with the next scholarship out of high school to the Yale Drama School. So I will be forever grateful. And the fact that she blessed our cast with her presence um, and her spirit and everything and her wicked sense of humor, uh, we, we are so blessed and lucky to have had her. So. Well, Michelle, go. Okay, just because I was talking about Joan, I'd like to follow through. Because this brilliant actress, and I think you have a piece of there was a story on uh, Not to Lenny that was the best storyline ever. I mean, it was people were jumping crazy for her to get her babies back on the show. This is a clip that shows the brilliance of the actress Joan Van Ark, who was being talked to by the doctor after she just bore her twins. We lost the babies. What? I'm sorry. There was nothing we could do. They were still born. But I saw them. I heard them cry. I'm very, very sorry. <laughs> Where did you find that? Oh, my God. See, there, Michelle goes, Lee. there goes kudos to Michelle Lee for putting all this together, the homework, the time taken. 
God bless. But uh, that's why yeah. I, I don't know if I ever saw that. I had to. What is it? I said I don't think I ever saw that. I mean, when you do it, you do it full out, and I don't like watching. As, uh, but that, yeah, because, wow, Michelle. Told me, I know I told Donna. But you know, the reason I wanted to do it, and the guys, Seth and James, uh, probably don't know why I gave them so much stuff. I didn't know they were going to choke this much. But being that it's our 40th anniversary, and it is, and because we're so proud of the work that everybody did on both sides of the camera, really, and had such extraordinary things written for us. And people like Ted, I think he's back, but there was a marriage of all of us that goes on to this very day. The three girls, the three of us, see each other often. We're still go girlfriends. And I know the relationship between Joan and Ted is as solid and as wonderful today as this Romeo and Juliet couple. So I just wanted to honor everyone for what it was. Now, so I could keep talking the way Donna says I do, I would, <laughs> I'd like to play one uh, uh, Kevin Dobson and to show the relationship with Kevin Dobson and uh, Karen, and they were the character characters, and I everybody probably knows out there, but they were the characters that had the solid marriage while all these dingbats were going around crazy <laughs> on either side. But let's do kind of a comical something. I know there's us fishing. Yes. There, there's a, a few different comical ones. Hold on, Michelle, because I because I think with your with your computer setup, we're gonna just mute when I'm talking or someone else talking, because then, because I know you can hear me, but then you'll come on. So it's, so it's, it's totally fine. Cause you're, you're totally clear when you're talking, Yeah. but <clears throat> I want you to address before I play this, um, the fact that there was so much and Joan and Donna, I want to ask you too, after we show this clip, actually, we're going to bring on Dr. LaPook in a second, but, um, the fact that you had so much input with the with the the storylines and the scripts and uh, and Michelle, before we set this up, I want you to talk about that because tell me, I, I think I read that 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 was possible, like maybe Mac Kevin Dobson was going to have an affair, and you were like, no, we're the stable couple, you can't do that, and then they decided not to. Is that correct? That is correct, and also Donna in the twin story. I'll make this fast. In the twin story, it was it looked like Donna had Abby had really been behind taking taking the and she went to, to David Jacobs and said, if you have me stealing those twins, they're never gonna watch me again. We had a great marriage between us and David Jacobs, the powers that be. We could talk to them. They became us, the writing became us, we became them. And yeah. Uh, he could never have an affair. We got a lot of of letters, ladies that were very upset when it looked like maybe he was going to. All right, I'm going to play this. You know, I think you're right about Diana. We used to have such great communication, and now she's so angry all the time. It's just... I Karen, shut up. What? Don't talk. Can I even... No. But I can't help it. If I think something, I've got to say it. Not while you're fishing. But if, but if, but if I... You're uh, scaring the fish. You're the one who's yelling. Because I want some quiet. That's the way you get it, by yelling? Is this quiet enough? Yes! <laughs> Everybody's asking for quiet. That shows you the comedy we were all able to do. It was... Oh, Gavin. He was yeah, but, yeah, he could do anything. He could just see that the drama seamless. I'm gonna shut up for a while because but what what, what was wonderful is uh, with that, did we did we complete our toast to the to the man of the hour? Yeah, to Kevin. You know, oh please, God bless you, Kevin. And I wanna say that if Susan is listening or watching or with us and the, his whole gorgeous family, God bless you. I, I always remember so many things. Kevin would laugh so hard that there would be tears in his eyes. It would literally, tears would roll down his cheek. The other thing was, where's the beer? Because he's from New York, first and foremost. Where's the beer in the camper? 
that's where we're going, Kevin. We love you. We love you. We love you. Love you. It's beautiful. All right. We're going on that note to um, take a short medical break while you three ladies take a break. Um, you can powder, powder. Because we have Dr. John LaPook, the chief medical correspondent from CBS News. I know. That's wonderful. Is he going to talk about what, COVID? Yes. Yes, yes ma'am. Why do you have a question? Well. Hold on. One, two, three. Dr. LaPook. <laughs> Hi. You're wonderful. <laughs> I listen on uh, KNX too on the radio. You're constantly all oh, over the place. Thank you so much. Yeah, for sure. He's but been doing our, I was saying oh. he's been here since March doing our live stream. He shows up every day and gives us a COVID update. You have any oh. questions, for Ms. Van Ark? Well, just uh, are we going to come out of this okay? What What do you What What is your gut feeling about the the blending off of this, if any? Yeah, I mean, I think we will come out of this, but it's going to still be a bumpy ride. We're right in the middle of it. And you probably saw yesterday, the cases went up to what was around 56,000 cases There's again a, a day. Yes. So it's, it's the cold weather. People are going indoors and the, you know, respiratory viruses love the cold and the dry. And, know. Um, you know, I was going to say for today to everybody, please. This is, this is, no. I know we all, we have COVID fatigue. I have it too. I just flew down from New York to DC today. It was the first time I was in a plane in for like six months. I, I forgot how to go, go through, you know, security. Like, yes. it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But um, I'm, I'm wearing, you know, I was wearing an N95 and a mask over that and a face shield. Yes. I mean, yes. I, I didn't have the cone of silence, but I had pretty much everything else. But, um, you know, I'm sick of it like everybody else is sick of it, but we have to redouble our efforts now. And, you know, if everybody wore a mask and did everything else, but especially the mask, now that we know the CDC, the Centers for Disease Control, has finally acknowledged that the virus can float through the air in these tiny aerosols that can go out across the room. So if you're indoors, you got to wear a mask. No way do you go to a bar. Outdoors is safer than indoors. You're hearing, you're hearing dogs barking. And, um, but, or um, somebody with a very sore throat. It. We, <laughs> Maybe it's COVID. <laughs> um, we, we, I think, you know, we don't, no, none of us want to feel out of control. And that's right. part of the trouble right now is that we feel out of control. But we do have the ability to make a difference here with these steps that we know are important. And on top of that, we have the month. Huh? The mask is maybe the most important, do you think, it's when you're so, outdoors? It's, well, outdoors is safer than indoors. It's most okay. important. I mean, you should wear it outdoors because we should all be wearing the mask. Indoors, it's especially important. Um, yes. We're happy that we have the therapeutics. We think remdesivir and the monoclonal antibodies are very promising. The vaccine will come. You know, we'll probably start to roll it out in the beginning of next year, you know, fairly widely. And there are, you know, lots and lots of these that are being manufactured at risk, meaning that they're betting. They're not betting on just one. They're betting on several seven or eight of them and and paying the companies enough to make hundreds of thousands if not more uh of doses so that we're not going to be waiting for them to ramp up but there are logistics here and you know because the politics have inter interjected in them in into the whole process people are are worried about the, you know they're worried is the vaccine going to be safe and now we're hearing at least 30 percent of the country is not going to take the vaccine i mean think about it if the vaccine is 70 percent of affected, which, which would be amazing, but, but only 30% of the country takes it. That's 21%, right? Protection in terms of herd immunity. We need about six, about 60, 70% of everybody uh, immunized, immune, immune in order to get herd immunity. So, you know, I mean, I guess I'll end with this because you guys are going to go back to your wonderful no, reunion. Um, I love a friend of mine had this wonderful thought, which was it's when you're thinking about the politicization of wearing a mask. Imagine it's World War II and it's London and it's the Blitzkrieg and there's the blackouts, right? The blackout, everybody said, put on the blackout shades because we don't want the Nazi bombing bombers to be able to see your apartments. Well, what if one person said, no, I'm gonna leave my lights on. It's my right to do so. You're not gonna infringe on my liberties. Well, his apartment or her apartment might not get bombed, but your neighbors might. And that's what happens yeah. if you walk in, yeah. you're a young person or any age and you're not wearing a mask, you may not get bombed, but you may bomb somebody else. You may infect somebody else and they may bring. So we really have to think like the greatest generation thought, which was a time when people were 
I think understanding maybe more, more so than as a population we are now, that we have a role to, for, to society, we have a duty, um, and it's not just about us. We have, we're, we're only as strong as, as our weakest link. Yeah. And yeah. just Joe Van Ark, you'll be happy to know Dr. LaPook's favorite comment, which I love, this will have a beginning, a middle, and an end. He says it's not an extinction thing. It's going to end eventually. We just have to hang in there and kind of, quote, unquote, suffer through it. But it's going to end, right, Dr. LaPook? Yes, and ending doesn't mean the vaccine. And when the vaccine comes, it's going to be the vaccine plus masks plus everything else we're talking about, understanding how to be safe with the hand washing. I don't have to go over it again. Uh, and then and I keep waiting for some breakthrough with mass technology. I mean, some. Well, that may be out there. Okay. Million dollar pro so anyway, I, I, I'm, I'm looking forward to the, I think that one, a surprise may be that somebody comes up with an amazing mask that molds to your face and is see-through and has mm -hmm. nanoparticles in it and boom, 99% effective. And you put on some goggles and you go back to the theater. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. We would love that. That'd be great. Well, right. thanks, thank you, John, for food. for making it work here. Uh, come through. Yeah, I was in the right. I was in the air one hour ago. <laughs> wow. Okay. Still got it. Take right. care. Be safe. Bye. Bye. That's the best. I that love you, Joan. I'm sorry. You Did know, it make you feel better? I wanted to ask him too if you can run outside, but I'm taking every. But well, hold on, hold on, John. Ask. She wants to ask a question. This is well, actually a great question, Joan. Which is because we see that in New York, in joggers not wearing I'm masks. There every day. I'm out every day, but I go in uh, Toluca Lake fast, uh, fast. I do the ten miles. But the thing is, uh, when you're out in open air at night with less traffic, less people, less everything. You can take the mask off then. I see a lot of people without them. I would have it around your neck when, if you're not yeah. within, oh, I 10, take it. if you're not within 15 feet of somebody else, yes. fine. You see somebody else coming, put it up, yeah. you know? Yeah. And I think it's not just for the physical safety of it, but yeah. the emotional safety. Somebody else doesn't want to run by you and have to hold their breath and thinking, oh my God, what if you have an aerosol? Just, you know, right. put it up and then of course then, put it back down, but be yeah. aware. It's yeah. not a time where you can space out anymore. You got to, be aware of who's around. Totally. I a hundred percent. All right. I thank you. And I apologize for taking the time, but John, that's a great question. It's, it's a, great a question. wonderful it's question. question. Take care. Right. Thank you Dr. L Thanks, for answering John. everything. No, it's, it's great. You know, Joan, we've had him on, we've had him on 200 shows and He's that question. Wonderful. I listen every day. We love him, but that question actually has not been asked, and it's been it's been on the back of my mind. So I'm glad you asked it. It's basically, common sense. If you're near people, put it on. If you're isolated, you don't have to. So that's great. And it is about making person feel better too, as they're jogging by you. Yes, it, it, so they feel safe. And the bottom line is too, it's good for you to stay healthy and stay exercising and doing what yes. something, anything to keep your body strong. I totally absolutely, and especially your breathing. Yes. Yeah. So, exactly. Yeah. That's good. So Donna Mills, we're going to bring you back. Hi, Donna. Hi, Donna. Looking glamorous. She refreshed. And Michelle Lieb, we're going to put her on mute if we're talking. <laughs> but we love Michelle. We, Michelle, you'll, just, you'll set up the clips. Yes. Great clip setting up. Oh, my God. Go ahead. Here, I'm going to put you up there. Oh, you have to unmute yourself, Michelle. <laughs> Not that way, dear. Oh, brother. There's always a comedy routine. She's old school. Okay. There we go. So uh, as we were speaking earlier about the effect that we, the actors, had uh, after so long uh, with anybody who was writing, they started, it was like, were they writing us or were we, were we writing them? One day, Joan and I, no, excuse me, I'm going into the sweater clip. But I, I was in the... Uh, I was getting ready and Don Mueller, who was our dialogue coach, was with me and I was wearing a sweater that was so tight. And I said, oh my God, I can't go on like this. I said, take your hands under my sweater and just pull. So I, the two of us were talking, we went to David Jacobs and we told him a real everyday story that happens to everybody, every woman out there. And this is what David Jacobs wrote. <gasps> oh my, this used to fit. It's fine. I look fat. <gasps> Karen, you... Wait a minute, come here. Come here. A 
Okay, now lean. What? Pull back like you're skiing. Pull. Go. Back. There. Oh, God. Did the cleaner shrink it? I, I don't know. It, it was a big sweater. Ooh. <laughs> I gave her boobs. I gave her boobs at the same time. She had pretty good ones. I gave her better boobs. Ted Chappelford, is he still here? Between Ted and David. Okay, so I've got to say again, so, so leave it to the girls. Uh, there's a wonderful scene uh, between the two of them because, you know, everybody hated Abby. And I hated Donna. It worked so well. It was a package deal. A package deal. <laughs> so there's a great, there's just this one scene, you know, Donna was leaving with everybody. And one of the reasons that we went off the air was there was no one left for her to sleep with. <laughs> so, okay, there's a scene where Joan finds out that Donna is, that Abby is having an affair. And this is with, with her husband. With her husband. Yeah, with her husband. With Gary. Gary. Are you and my husband having an affair? What? You heard me. You're letting your writer's imagination run away with you. Don't play games with me, Abby. Oh, here we go again. Wicked, wicked Abby. Well, I'm not saying we're having an affair. And I'm not saying we're not. I am saying I can have him anytime I want him. Oh. Does that answer your question, Val? Oh. There was a lineup. There was a lineup we did. Oh, oh don't say it's on the gag reel. It's on the okay. There's hold a, on a second. Joan, Donna, were you really slapped by Joan? What did it do? Like? No, they added the set. Yes. Wait, wait, wait. Like, this is, you know, this is real acting. Yeah, yeah. Why not? She she said, "Go ahead. I don't mind. I I, I want this to be the best we can possibly do. Go ahead and smack me." <laughs> no, you'll, Michelle's going to intro another clip somewhere here, and well, you'll see there is there is an Abby. There no, actually, it's a Donna clip on the gag reel. If you know what I mean, David. Oh, okay. is David still with us? In bed? It says slap on it. We're, we're gonna... Hold on, honey. We got We got to meet Michelle. For the echo. So we got. Did yeah. you ask Joan? David, no. Well, David's Wi-Fi is not working, but he's watching. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. How I know I... which one that that Michelle is. Talking oh, wait, Donna. About. Next time, answer the question. How about yes? I'm having an affair. <laughs> uh, too easy. Come on. Yeah. Right. And then I wouldn't get to smack. Well, I probably would double smack. Yeah. Would double smack. So rude. Here we go. This did not make the show, but it did make the gag reel. She hated you. Well, she doesn't have much to say about it now, does she? She's dead. Karen, hold it a second. I've been waiting five seasons to do this. Let me add her. Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Love it, love it, love it. It's a long line of people. Yeah. Hey, Don, did you ever, did any fans ever approach you in malls and be like, why are you such a biatch on the show? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, people, people used to kind of like protect their husbands from me. You know what I mean? I, I would I would meet people and they would be kind of cool towards me and then kind of step in front of their husband like that. <laughs> like I, I was blame them, but I want to say something that sort of uh, piggybacks what Michelle said. That Donna, as Larry Hagman did, managed to take a villain, and in her case, a villainess, and give her depth and humanity and moments, maybe private moments, maybe something in her house, whatever. But there was always a moment, like you saw. Oh my God, she's she's special. And she it, she knew how to get what she wanted, but she but she shared with the audience, and that was part of also what Michelle said about being able to talk to the writers, the producers. Sometimes they were both, uh, as in David's case, of course. Uh, but uh, that we we had the door was always open to their office for us in the cast to go up and say, "This doesn't feel right. Let's maybe yeah. not 
how about so, what about and there was conversation yeah the whole the whole secret to all of it is the writing that's where it started that's where it all emanates from and it, it was wonderful wonderful brilliant writing and whatever we did with it we couldn't have done that without that slack yeah. yeah can you describe what it was like what the week was like would you all show up and sit around like a bunch of bagels and do a read through of the script or would you do scene by scene by yourselves in the first uh, couple of seasons, we would have once a week lunchtime, we would Jacob. go to David Jacobs' office and read through the next script with the writers in the room, which was unprecedented. I don't know any other show that's ever done that. And it was wonderful. Uh, it was wonderful. We as the actors got to say what we thought, what, you know, everything. And uh, we did that for uh, maybe three seasons, something like that. I don't know. I don't remember why it ended, but it did. We didn't do it forever. But it was a time constraint. Yes, money, time and money. Yeah. But uh, it it was wonderful to to have that table read to be able to tra trade thoughts and uh, feelings about what we, we were about to shoot that next week. Uh, but the biggest, most wonderful thing about Knots was from top to bottom the collaboration, and and that's mm -hmm. crew actors all of it, writers, producers, all of it. There was collaboration and a genuine sense of that, by the way. You can party together, you can have dinners, you can have reunions um, and, and celebrating a milestone. Was that me? Am I sitting on something? Um, <laughs> but, but the fact is that we could communicate back and forth. Michelle, don't, you can't, you have to, because of the weirdness, you can't unmute it. Oh, yeah, you have That's, to stay muted until you talk. Just I know it. But don't worry, we're going to go to you in a second. I, I know, I but know. Hold so on, go back, hold Joan. On, hold on, Joan, because fans are asking, why is Michelle muted? I promise you, I love Michelle Lee as much as you, but the problem is exactly what Joan Van Ark just encountered, which was she couldn't, she couldn't hear. You know, you have to, we have to do this, Michelle. Yes. Uh, we're doing it live. So well, we're, the well, actual answer is Joan and Donna wrote and said, please meet Michelle for three quarters of the show. <laughs> yes, the the gimmick, if only we could do this in real life. Life. Yes. <laughs> praying, praying. Joan, go ahead. If you still have your thought. No, 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 no. I just, it's, I've basically said it because I think that was a blessing. And I also think it's why the show lasted as long as it did, because there was that genuine double depth of on the set, on the movie, uh, uh, you know, at the lot at Sony, now it's Sony, uh, to, to be there and to work as a team. And we had teamwork and uh, other shows become a family, a second family, but we were, it was deeper than that. I love that. Michelle. Michelle Lee. Um, do I have to unmute or am I? No, okay? you're. Okay. Um, also to add to that, most of us were theater actors. We were trained theater actors. And so, and by the way, I did hear the theater Broadway opening next June. I know. What? Gosh. Is yeah. that right? Well, <laughs> it may be later than that. Hey, Michelle, I'm going to mute you for one second because I want to talk about theater. So, Michelle Lee, I'm such a huge fan of Michelle Lee. And what happens is people become famous for one thing and then other people forget how multi talented they are. So, this is Michelle Lee. Back in the 70s, when she started in Seesaw, so many things I want to just talk about this. First of all, the acting is amazing. The filling of the air, as we say, but between the lyrics, the weird quirkiness, because she played this sort of goofy girl named Gittle Mosca. Things don't go well for her. So the weird goofiness of her body, plus the purity of the vowel. There's so many people that sing, and when they sing me, they open it to May because it's easier. Michelle Lee can nail an eval with amazing vibrato. It, this is just part of her, one little moment of her brilliance, but I want you all to take in the unbelievable talent this lady had and Knott's musical needs to come, Knott's landing needs to come back as a full musical <laughs> next year so we can really get all the way. But just watch the me placement and watch the quirkiness of her last pose. Here we go, I'm obsessed with this. If there's a wrong bell, I ring it.
standing ovation. Standing oh. oh. Speaking of the theater, please, Julie Harris. Oh. I know there's yes. a clip here. Of yes, Julie. now Julie Harris, Julie Harris did not have your belt. Let's just be honest. Julie Harris did not have the belt with the vibrato, but she has street cred. She had theater street cred. Show one of those amazing clips Michelle sent. Oh, hold on. Michelle, let's see. Which one should we do? There's two of them. There's one with Joan I love. And that they, oh, I'll set this up. She could if she knew what was coming. But they decided to do this particular scene the way it wasn't written. They thought, oh, we're going to be in, do another kitchen scene. We're going to pour the coffee and whatever. So take over, Joan. Do you know which one I'm talking about? Is it the hair perm? The perm? Oh, no, I've lost the voice. It's, it's the perm. I started because, yes, okay. Here it is. Oh, go ahead. Wait, she's going to tell the story. Uh, hold on. So what did you, how did you change it? Okay, here's the thing. I, I called I called Julie and I said, we have yet another scene in the kitchen. Oh dear, oh dear. Isn't there something that we could do to make it different, to make it special, to change just a chit chat in the, in the kitchen? And she said, well, I just had my hair cut. We could do a perm. I'm not doing her very well. I think I must have COVID. Anyway, <laughs> but <laughs> no, but uh, so I called David and I said, could we try what what if we you know had uh, uh, Valine giving Lily May a perm in there and, and, and instead of just the the, the chit chat in the in the, in the kitchen and so this is what and that give them an idea and look what they came up with take it all contains no lie well I should hope not ask me no questions I'll tell you no lie <laughs> no you are being silly. <laughs> Well, why shouldn't I be? This vibrant, glossy perm has gone to my head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet it's so good to hear you laugh again. Come on, come on, Mama, let's rinse you off. Come on. Oh, my God, that makes me want to cry. Oh. What does it feel like, Joan, watching that? I don't know. I thought, well, God, she's so much younger. I, I'm not talking Julie. I'm talking, but uh, I, 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 to hear her voice, to hear her, I know because she sweet pea and all the, you know, and she played the zither and everything. Oh God, it's so, she was so special. I have a picture of her in, in the alcove where uh, I keep all my perfume and stuff. I see her every day. I, I think of her sometime every, uh, every day. She was too special and such a gift to us, to us, to us. Where is Ted? So Ted, David Jacobs looks like he yeah. just came on. Ted's Ted, Ted Chockleford is not, it's not. It's out. His, his Wi-Fi is not out. Even on, but David, we can see. So let's so, try to bring David on. Let's bring in David on. David? David, can you hear me correcting you? It was a zither, not, I mean, it was a dulcimer, not a zither. Oh, it was a dulcimer, not a zither. So he did hear yeah. the story. And they said, let's get that straight. Oh, I'm my goodness. in this country. Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. But <laughs> zither or whatever, a xylophone, whatever, zither, xylophone, and, and sweet pea. Dulcimer. Dulcimer. Yeah. Dulcimer. Okay. But it's the genius of you and the staff, the writing, the producing, all of it. You and Mike. It's time somebody said that, you know. Well, <laughs> come on. Yeah, no, really, you always say that. You guys always say that. They really David, give us give they us some behind really, the scenes really stories. They say they tell everybody in the press and everything that it was all me, but it wasn't. It was all them. Oh no, it wasn't. It's collaborative. Right. I mean, they were my they were my little you know my little speakers. voice box. Your voice my box speakers. My little speakers. Right. Yeah, voice box. Christ! Now that I'm, now when I'm connected, I'm I feel like crying instead of being connected. Again. It only took you 40 minutes to get connected to this. <laughs> well, you know, your mic is better. If you raise the phone, David, your mic yeah. is better. Okay. I'm not on the phone. I'm on the iPad. But I, how about if I move it like that? Does that work better? If you just move it closer to your yap. My yap? Yeah, because you might be blocking the microphone on your phone. I don't think it's, that or the, or the, it's not up. It's all you Oh, okay, wait a minute. I'll, I'll get a book. You're blocking the microphone on your zither. <laughs> I don't have a zither. <laughs> oh. 
Joan, if you put your, if you're able to put your cell phone in the private chat, we can send you some donations. We just got some more donations. Yeah, you can finally show up, Donna and Michelle, with your line readings. <laughs> all, I have is, all I have is something from Ted. It says sport coat and shirt because we, we went from I went from running to glitter. So all I've, nobody wants me, and nobody. Here, I'm sending you a text. You see, I don't think I'm hooked up. I got to look at the private chat. Look at the private chat. On the screen, do you see that? What's your cell, Joan? Respond there. Private. Or we'll send them to Donna. She'll do, do uh, another uh, Abby line reading. That's right. All right. I don't. Um, I don't. I'll I don't have here. any new ones. All right, we're going to send you right now. Hold on, James will send okay. you. Oh, Michelle. Wait, Michelle. Michelle has something to show us. Hold on. One, I have two. my check balance. Is all I have on there. Okay, so Joan fade out. <laughs> Michelle Lee has something to show us. She's very excited. One, two, three, go. Go. Okay. What I have here has nothing to do with the phone calls, which are coming in. Uh, but to show you, this is David, to show you how close our family was of actors and how connected we are. He sent this when Kevin passed away to all of us. He said to Karen, Val, Gary, Sumner, and Abby, we lost two Larrys and Mike and Julie. Now Kevin. That's plenty, more than our share. There's enough love less left to glue us together. Keep us whole. Please, guys, take care of yourselves. Love, David. It's nice. There's a lot of words just to say don't die. There are no more time. I can't stand it. While he's that we could do another Julie on the Roof with Alec Baldwin. Yes. I love that. Oh, we got. There's a very important question. Hold on, mute Michelle for a second. That was a great scene. I was. I, was, I saw that scene in Dallas. That was a great scene. And, and I said to uh, my son Aaron, who was then about six or seven years old, you know, maybe we should have killed him right there. And, oh. and, and he said, "Well, you can always go back and get it." I said, "This kid is too close to show business. Oh. So we go back to get it. No, oh. so, no, let's keep him forever." And Mike said, "No," and so. Alec went on to nothing. What 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 did he do after that? Yeah, what is he doing now? He um <laughs> he uh, he's a non-equity. Anyway, hey, listen, David Jacobs, you have a very important question that people will not stop asking. So we need to hear your voice speaking out. Time for the million dollar question, Mr. David Jacobs. When, when, when can we stream Knots Landing through a service or on DVD? Well, there are two. Seasons. I know. I'm 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 rooting for it. You know. I, I That's the know. answer. I, so, don't, I don't know. I don't know. They don't. They don't ask me when they can sell it. They send so, me a check, but you know it's cheap. The check is cheap. So, <laughs> David is not currently playing anywhere. Uh, it, it, you know, anywhere in the earth. In on the earth, yes. On I, our. I don't know. I don't know. The one, the, the country that's been really the best to us has been France. And Germany. Yeah. Uh, Germany likes Dallas better. But uh, France has been very good to not signing all through the years. Côte West is what Côte they West. Say. Côte West, right. Côte right. West. west. So, in England, too. England, it's played over and over oh, yeah. and over again. Yes, they're yeah. they're doing it now, they actually. Do, they, 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 they are. Yeah. Yeah. They do a season. Yeah. yeah. I love seeing it. Yeah. Okay, so this hold on. Not a new right? right? Um, I did you just send them? Hold on, we just sent you new donations, Donna Mills. Wait, did you not send? Hold on, sorry, Donna Mills. There you go. Okay, yeah, check out your phone. My phone? No, Donna Mills has new donations to read from people. Okay. Uh, where did I leave off? It should be a brand new text, Craig from Washington. Beginning with Craig, I, I left what off I, Craig. I, okay, yes, now I have Brian from Connecticut. You have to read Craig first. Oh, sorry. Craig from Washington. Um, love watching Donna and Joan and Ted film the dream sequence on the Oregon coast in 1984. Oh, we love that too. Thank you. Thank you for your donation. Brian from Connecticut. From the Dobsons in Ridgefield. We miss Kevin and we are so happy to see all of you. You look wonderful. Donation. Jeff from Florida, I donated $140, 10 what? for each 
each season. Oh, that's really nice. <laughs> Never missed an episode. Donation in memory of Knott's EP, Michael Feilerman. A oh. friend and colleague I still miss every day. Thank you for this un unforgettable evening. Oh, that's so nice. Keep that's keep so the good. donations coming, folks. Starsinthehouse.com, or you can donate. Um, text fund twenty twenty uh, fund twenty twenty to five six five one two. It all goes to the actress fund. That's right. So, yeah. by the way, David, you still haven't really answered why is it not on DVD and why is it not streaming. Some people are saying because of song rights. Do you know the actual answer? Anybody? That, know that has answer? nothing to do with song rights. It usually song rights is the reason why you don't do things. But we didn't have any of that uh, any original songs that uh, we could have used. I don't know why, and I'm not close with Warner Brothers. And um, and I, I I don't know why. So they basically, we need to call our friends at Warner Brothers. Okay, yeah. you have friends at Warner Brothers. Yes, I do. Okay, there yeah. you go. Uh, Ted and I did do the first uh, doo doo. There was doo doo. Hello. Uh, <laughs> there was a, a a DVD that came out that was yeah. first. Was it first season season or two? Season. It might have been one and two. I'm I'm not sure, but. But that was the only one, to my knowledge, that does is out there and does exist. But it should play stateside. You know, here's, here's, here's a weird thing, okay? There's bootleg out there. I went on the internet and looked for it and found a place where you can order all of Knott's Landing, the wow. whole thing. I ordered it. They sent me a thing that they were going to send it, and then they reversed it they recognized who I was. And that's why they didn't send it to me. Donna, that's when fake names come in. You gotta be like Donna Shapiro, so nobody will know. Yeah, I, I know. I mean, I, you know, I really wanted to, I, I wanted to see it before I, I sort of brought charges. Do you know what I mean? It, yeah. But then they, they canceled it and they wouldn't send it to me. My friend just wrote to me, we have bootlegs of all 14 seasons. It's on 74 DVDs. Wow. 74 DVDs? Yeah. Wow. 78 RPM. No, no. <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. <laughs> That's a lot of postage. Michelle Lee, I want you to set up the other the other clip with uh Julie Harris and um and and Alec Baldwin. You started to talk about that before. Oh, hold on. Hold on. One second. You gotta unmute yourself. One of the things we were talking about before is the brilliance of the actors on this show and you're acting and you're acting and you're writing and you're writing that you gave us. So we have Julie Harris all over the place. We know Julie. Um, um, so uh, you just saw a wonderful scene about the perm with Joan. This is the other side of Julie and her incredible ability to do anything. This is Julie with Alec. I will do what I think is right. This doesn't involve you. You are nothing but a willful little boy. You've trampled on the feelings and lives of everyone who's ever loved you. You're cruel to your wife. Your own sister's afraid of you, and you lie to all of us. Mama. And the worst part is, the sad part is that I believed you. Every time you lied to me, I believed you because I loved you. God. <laughs> That's it. Oh, she was on our oh. show. Oh, well, that that was like the lark too. There was something in that that had such, oh, Joan of you know Saint. The lark was her one of. Well, that's certainly one of her Tonys. But this is for clamped time. <laughs> Amazing. 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 How handsome was it? Donna? How handsome was Alec Baldwin up close? <laughs> he's very yeah, he's very good looking. Very, very. Yeah. It's a shame he can't get a job yet. He should be able to, he should be out there still. I don't know. Doesn't make sense. Yeah. He's got it going on. Yeah. Well, we didn't we in his uh, in his memoir, which is very good by the way. It's very good. Um he talks about when he was you know uh disinvited on the show or 
we couldn't get him for a full season. Anyway, he said he had very mixed feelings about it. And the main reason he, he wished he could stay is because working with Julie Harris was like, he knew it was the greatest thing professionally he would ever do in his life. And there was no way to top that. He said, on the other hand, David Jacobs <laughs> really was for the women on the show. And he was right. <laughs> Yeah, he's right. He's, you know, whatever his political thoughts or his, his thoughts about theater or anything, whatever he had to think, he gave it to the cast again and to the women all the time. Oh, I was speaking of women. Well, lucky for the three women that are sitting here. Yes, that, ladies. Lucky because yeah. he David Jacobs was a gift to us. And he loved every him. day we went into <laughs> no, but every day we went in to work. That's that's the truth. The characters. And he, he allowed us the space to embellish or weave into his writing uh, some other cloth there, some other threads. David, so. you you were so you you yeah. weren't able to be on at the very beginning, and I had a question for you as a Dallas fan and a Knotts Landing fan myself. Tell tell us a little bit of your idea for Knotts Landing because you actually thought of it before Dallas, right? Right. When I when I first came to L.A. in, in uh, 1976, um, and and I got a few little jobs, and um, I was um, uh, I worked on on a show called Family. It was very good. And I was the story editor. That was really my first job, and then I was getting hot because uh, anybody that could work for Carol and Nigel McKeon for more than six months was hot <laughs> automatically. So anyway. Um, <laughs> Uh, they gave me a, 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 um, a before I left Lorimar and, and the other show I was doing, they gave me a, 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 a development deal. And the reason was, because Mike Fileman was very smart, he said, you're going to get hired now because, you know, you, you, you got this reg reputation and you're, you're hot. And uh, you're going to get it. But to make sure that you don't have to be exclusive to the next show, you'll already have this this deal in place where you have a deal to do a development deal i said okay i didn't know anything and so anyway i i, I um uh i came up I, I went to work on uh after family i was really sure i wanted to do a show kind of in that direction you know a homey kind of show but i wanted to do it and the way i presented it to mike when he called me up i said when are you going to get through the show um i said well, I want to do like scenes from a marriage, you know, which I had just seen the, the, uh, the, uh, you know, the famous guy, uh, the Swedish guy, um, and but Southern California on a cul-de-sac. Um, okay. So we took it into CBS and I've always felt Michael's not around anymore. So I can't never be able to check it out that he called CBS before, before we went in to tell him, he's going to bring you something really classy. You don't want it. So, <laughs> but tell him, you know. So anyway, at the end of the pitch for Knott's Landing, you know, scenes from a marriage times four, um, Kim LeMaster said, you know, we really do want to work with you two guys, but we're looking for something more, more, more glitzy, a little, you know, a little hotter. So, as soon as he said glitzy and like a saga, he said, I thought, oh, okay, so it should be a, in Texas, right? And it should be a Western, except modern. And that was what, that, that's how, not slang, uh, and on the way back to the studio, uh, to the uh, our offices, I said to Mike, it's got to be in Christmas, Texas, and it's got to be, you know, uh, big. So that, that Dallas wrote itself, sort of. And then when Dallas got to be uh, came on and got to be it hit fairly fast, they said I went in to pitch something else entirely, <laughs> and they and the guy uh, the CBS guy said, okay, but I have these pages for, for this show, Not Landing. Is there any way to make that a Dallas spin, spin off? And I said, well, there was because we Lucy's parents weren't in the show; they they were you know Gary and Val were were characters that were established in the pilot but we're never seen so let's make them be uh, one of the one of the uh, characters in the in the thing but see i didn't run dallas 
because I had never had a show of my own before. But Knots, I ran right from the. But but David, when you wrote when because you wrote the episodes, I I looked it up. The first two episodes of the second season of Dallas that had Gary and Val. Did you know when you wrote those scenes that are you you had them in that you were going to have them in Knots Landing yet? Did you know that? No, no. The only way, no, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Um, the only thing is I had um, when I was uh, auditioning for the part of Sue Ellen on Dallas, who wasn't cast yet, we had, there was no scene in the pilot, in the pilot that was written for them to read. So I would write scenes especially, and, and I eventually used those. And they're moving into Knott's Landing with one of the scenes. Oh. So it was, uh, when they first meet Karen. And we knew, but we knew who Karen was by that time. Wow. You can show that? Because Mike yep. suggested Karen, uh, or Michelle, actually. Well, I found well, this. Fight it out. I found this clip, which I think is the episode that was right before the premiere of Knott's Landing. This that is transition. like, yeah, transitioning from Dallas. Yeah, that's. A- oh, Gary, you and how the hell are you? Sorry. Gary. Oh, Gary. I'm in Dallas. I want to see you. Oh, Lord, it's good to hear your voice. That mean you. Will you marry me? Get married. I hope this didn't ruin your well-planned little holiday, darling. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Oh, my Lord. What no, a... David? No yes? What a, I mean, to think of that, which is television history, say what you will, Dallas. And then a 14... Fortune... Yeah. And uh, and then the, the longevity of knots. I mean, that's an amazing body of work and an amazing uh talk about gifts today to to the television viewing public to to have uh, two shows like that that have such life and now uh, i know that um the the mark Harmon's show is going through the roof and will probably be on 20 years from now mm-hmm. but the bottom line is what are what D- dallas and knots are like two and three or Three and four of the all-time television shows that um, that have ever been on, and I, I'm not sure of the exact number, but I think it's like a two and three, three and four, so right there back to back. So yeah, the the guy, you know, the uh, Law and Order guy is sort of a quiz. His shows last longer than anybody's. So oh, they're uh, number one, two, three, four, five, and six. Although I think they oh, only one show. We got bumped down because of that. yeah, yeah, not landing. <laughs> Black Atlantic lasted more years than Dallas, but Dallas had more episodes. And for a while, oh. it was just second to, uh, to, uh, you know, was Gunsmoke. It? Gunsmoke was a, oh, was Gunsmoke, yeah. yeah. Yes. 14 years. I hope you're no longer renting and you can afford to buy. Uh, I want to just show everybody this, by the way. Kevin Dobson's wife has this comment. Michelle, this is for you. Susan Dobson is watching. Michelle, my husband's other wife, you look so beautiful as everybody else does, but... You know, <laughs> so that was free. Oh. Can I tell you a cute story about Kevin? Kevin was not famous for doing the lines as written, and and he would always, you know, come in and change it. Well, I wrote one show. It was the last show I wrote um, of those of the Dallas Not Landing thing, and it was his father, who was Jeff Corey, the actor, who just was came to him to say he had cancer and he wanted him to help him die. And uh, they had had a very uh, strange relationship, a very strained relationship. And there was one line when, when he asked him to do it that I had written in the script. But when I got to the, to the, uh, to the uh, studio, the day that it was being shot, that the scene was being shot, Kevin said, I don't, I don't know, I don't know. And I said, Kevin, I don't know what to do with this scene. I had already written the line. But Kevin said, he didn't let me know that, that he had, he had looked at it in advance. And he says, I don't love you enough to kill you. And I thought that was one of the greatest lines I ever wrote. And the way he delivered that was so fabulous. I said, oh, he said, I know, oh, I know what the line should be. I don't love you enough to kill you. 
Oh. And I thought he was going to make it glib, and I laughed at it. But he didn't. He wasn't glib when he delivered it. No. It was my favorite. My favorite Kevin line, and I still cry. <laughs> I love the collaboration. Uh, that's it was, it was all, yeah. That's why this cast was the best cast ever, because they always collaborated. They always collaborated, even when they knew better and they didn't mind telling you. <laughs> oh, and, and I could hear the words. I could hear the words. I could hear the words as I wrote. It was the easiest show. Of, I, I thought this is the easiest thing to make this much money. I'd never made more than twelve thousand dollars in a year before I came out here, and 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 I can't to do it like this. And it was so easy, but it wasn't because all the other shows were hard. <laughs> this show was so beautifully cast. And think yeah. of the people like Howard Duff and Ava Gardner and the end of Holly Berry. Oh my gosh! And oh, list man. of people who guest starred these icons mm -hmm. and uh, you know when Ava Gardner her first day of work I happened to be in ahead of her because of course it took 12 hours for this one but no uh, but but she was due that day there's a knock on the door at 7 a.m. sharp knock 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 door opens there's Ava Gardner in a man's blue work shirt uh, you know long sleeve uh, the kind the guy would wear to work with a tie and khaki pants and everyone, Bill Reynolds, Debbie Reynolds' brother was the makeup man. I'm sitting there where our jaws drop because we knew she was coming, but there she is in front of us. She gets in the trailer. It's silent because no one knows what to say or who, who should speak. I jump out of the chair. She's into it. And with the silence, she took off this man's shirt, the blue work shirt, twisted with her, just her bra, twisted it around her back, tied it and said, let's get to work. <laughs> Do you know how Ivan Gardner got they came to be that person? What? Yeah, you know, you must know this story. Uh, a couple of years later, I was doing a uh, a show in New York, and um, this w nameless woman who worked for NBC was. They had finally tried. Uh, they gotten me at NBC. To, they wanted them, me to do a show for them, and I finally agreed to do it. And uh, I was having a big fight with their, their representative who wanted everything to be in place. And I said, um, and she was getting me so crazy that when we were in New York, I called my wife and said, get your mom, get the kids, bring them to New York. We'll stay till the end of the week till we finish the shooting. And then we'll send the kids home with your mom. And you and I are going to Paris because I'm not going back to LA with that woman. <laughs> oh you know? my. And, and, she said, okay. So I called Mike. I had to call Mike Fileman because he and I were still doing knots to tell him I wasn't coming back next week. And he said, oh, no, go ahead. I'll take care of it. I'll, you know, I can look. So okay. And about a half an hour later, he called me up and he said, How, how'd you like to have dinner with Olivia de Havilland? I said, sure. He said, well, she lives in Paris and she loves to have guests. And I just spoke to Mark, her agent. I forgot his last name. And, um, uh, and then you can write it off, too. You can write off the whole thing. I said, oh, okay. Well, what am I supposed to do? He says, well, she won't do it. She won't do the show. But you'll be, you'll be able to write it off. So I went, and Diana and I went, and we got uh, I got a driver. And they the William Morris Agency got me a, a reservation at this new restaurant called Jacqueline Phoenix, which you couldn't get reservations for four years. And we went to... Livy at the Havilland's house, and we had two drinks, and we went to Jacqueline Phoenix, and we had dinner. It was just a magical, completely magical night. But in the restaurant, she said to me, "So tell me about this part." And I said, "I hadn't, I hadn't thought one moment about this part." I said, "Well, it's Sumner, it's Bill Devane's mother." And then I sort of started unraveling it, and it was great. It's a terrific part. So she really took it seriously. But finally, she passed. And, and Mike said, no, no, we have to get somebody because this is a great part. He said, we'll get Ava Gardner. Wow. Oh, my wow. God. Yeah, if, you hadn't hated, if you hadn't hated that one from NBC, it never would have happened. <laughs> Michelle Lee, oh, you've sent 45,000 clips. Please set up another amazing clip. Hold on, because, because here's what I think. I, it's already... We're well over an hour and a half. We actually have a surprise guest in a second. So here's the thing, Michelle Lee. I think what well, we have to do, surprise, really for you guys. but we, what we have to do 
is is just have you back. Make sure that Ted Shackelford's Wi-Fi is good. That Michelle Lee buys a new laptop so we yeah. don't have to keep muting her every two seconds. She's on her old and that, manual typewriter. <laughs> and that David Jacobs comes back and has uh, better some, microphone. Yeah, better microphone. So we'll just have to do a part. Two. We're going to be doing the show for a long time. Pointing, so Michelle Lee, Michelle Lee, I think it's a great show. Is this pilot? Maybe this. Okay. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. What I want to say, very important to Kevin Dobson, for anybody who wants to uh, honor him, there's a way of honoring him, or I can't read my writing, um, foodtolife.org. Okay. That is, if you want to honor Kevin, okay? Food to life. Is this going to that is fun. Watching you, watching David Jacobs in and out in his ear and whatever is like yeah. watching Pence with his fly. It's not I forget that for being compared to him. I hate him so much. I was waiting for you to say good night, everyone. <laughs> we could have gone for two more. Good night, everybody. This really was not yet. Not yet, M Michelle. Yes. One more clip before we bring on our um, our pal. So bring. We have so many clips. You want to do one of the gag reel? Yeah. There's thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds. 30 Which seconds. one? Which one? Uh, I don't know now. Here Wait. we're talking about Kevin. How about this one? It's, it's, Okay. Let's, let's do a Kevin one. Okay. Because you know I can't say I don't want you to feel safe or unsafe. What? You know that I know that you want, that I want, that I don't want, that you can say I can't say that you can say to feel safe. Sometimes we would do it for David Jacobs and everybody on the other side. We'd have our own fun. But how did you do it? How did you? How did you? Oh, you, you see, being a dramatic magic. One shot was him, and then Michelle was alone in the studio because there was no virus at the time. But she was alone in the studio, and then she put out her mouth at you. Ah, okay. All right. It's not live theater, John Van Ark. It works. Okay, so hold on. So we have a super fan that's coming on the show. So if you know Broadway, you would know her because she started in Cats, original company, Miss Saigon. She's a singing voice in the film Anastasia. But more importantly than any of those credits is the complete obsession with Knott's Landing. She's been hawking us, as we see in the Jewish religion, hawking us for months to bring you guys on. She really has. And I mean, and, and I love the show as much as, as she does, but she kept saying, when are you going to have a Knott's Landing reunion, James? When are you going to have one? When are you going to have one? And it's like most Broadway stars play it cool. She's like a super psycho fan. So we said, Liz, you'll be allowed to be here if you don't stalk anybody. <laughs> so please welcome the singing voice of Anastasia, Ms. Liz Calloway. Hey! Hi, everyone. Hi. Oh, my God. Hi, Michelle. Hey, how are you? I'm good. Can I just say what a joy this has been to see you all bringing up such incredible memories. Um, I love Knott's Landing so much. And I can't believe that. Thank you, James and Seth, for actually, for, for the first time, listening to me. And, <laughs> <laughs> but just not only, I mean, just to see, you all are so amazed. You were amazing in the show, but to see the 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 family that you have and, and to, I think, and I've been loving l watching some of the comments from everyone, you just, uh, you just made such a difference in so many people's lives. And my, my husband's very shy, but he's going to come here. Uh, he, we met in 1983. This is Dan. Come on in, honey. Soap opera star, soap opera star. He, but he introduced me to Knott's Landing when we met. He's like, oh, this is my favorite show. So, and so we've both been so looking forward to this. Dan has a question. You had a question or something. Oh, about I had a, well, to me, the, the thing that was so great about the show was, I started by watching Dallas 
And Dallas and Dynasty were larger than life. Yes. But Knott's Landing was real life. Real life. Which yeah. was completely different. And no more was it evident than the simplicity of like the 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 cliffhanger when when Jill was gonna make Val take the pills and or she would kill her kids. I mean I thought that could be happening next door. Mm. And it, it just felt, it was like real. And so the question I had was, this was for David, but he's not there. Did they know at the end of that season? How about Val, Joan Van Ark? Yeah. Is she right gonna... Friday, it took two solid days of just that room, that bedroom where we were uh, filming it, to, from top to bottom, 7 a.m. till sometimes we had... 18 hour days, but, but bottom line is two solid days. And the minute it was over, cause I didn't want to know the answer until I'd finished the work oh. to go. I went up to David and said, <laughs> okay, I guess I, you know, took the last gulp of that bottle of pills. Right. Is this goodbye? Do I say, I love you and thank you. And, and he said, no, don't worry. We'll, we'll figure out, or, you know, he let me by know. I, yeah, by the way, you're, you're, you're still with us, but I, Oh my God. I, that was a scare. Like that's what motivated all the emotion in the scenes. But it was so real. It was, it was know, incredible. It was really great. Really, really. Great. And like, Terry, Terry and Austin was Jill, and God bless. Yes, yes, yes. But I also just want to say, family. That key word. That's that's the thing. And we're family now. The three of us, especially Joan, Don, and Michelle. We're. It's a continuum. In fact, we've often said we're not K N O T done yet. Uh -huh. We're not, okay? And I will just say to Joan that you were great in Three Tall Women. Oh. I saw that uh, oh. many moons ago. But you oh. Were great. oh, oh, so. that, uh, that, that you have no idea what that means to me. Because that's New York. And I love New York and I love Broadway and all of that. But that's the top of the game. It doesn't get any better than that. No one knows better than you. Were great, though. Yeah. Well, you all are brilliant, brilliant actresses. I wanted to share. Uh, Michelle knows this, and Seth and James know that knows this, but I, I, a lot of people don't. That um, just we all know that Michelle's an amazing person, but she, uh, I had an encounter with her at the very beginning of my career um, in 1980. I was, when I first moved to New York, I was a singing waitress at Applause Restaurant on 40th and Lexington. And um, it was a Thursday night, very slow night, and a couple came into the restaurant and they were seated in my station. And I it was a, a man and a woman, and I recognized the, the man from, I think he was on Another World. He was like, oh my God, that's someone on a soap opera I watch. And I, and I, and I think you were my only table in this section. And I introduced myself. I said, I, how much I enjoy your work on um, Another World. And he said, well, do you know Michelle Lee? Oh. And I was like, Oh, yes. I mean, I knew who you were, but I hadn't watched Knott's Landing yet. I had listened to the Seesaw cast album, of course, but um, but you were very nice. And and you said to me, because all the waiters and waitresses sang two songs every hour, that was part of the job. And you said, is there anyone at the restaurant who knows the song Old Friend from I'm Getting My Act Together and Taking It Out on the Road? And I said, well, as a matter of fact, I do. So when my turn came, I sang the song and then, you know, I finished, I'm sure I spilled drinks on you. I was a horrible waitress, <laughs> but I, I, you know, I did my thing and then, you know, you left and I was clearing the table and Michelle left me a $50 tip. Oh. Now this was, this was 1980, $50 was the most I had ever made like on a New Year's Eve in tips. So oh. that you know, for this, you know, st poor starving actress, you know, recently moved to New York. That meant the world to me. And then we met and we've worked together a handful of times over the years. And, you know, the fact that I've had an opportunity, sometimes people do things that are nice, but you don't get to thank them. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just wanted you to know how much that meant to me. Mm -hmm. And if we have time, do we have time? Yeah, yes. we do. Liz Calloway, by the way, I just did inflation calculator. Do you know what that tip that Michelle Lee gave you in 1980 is worth today? What? 
$157. She gave you a $157 oh, wow. tip. Oh, that in is, context of how great Michelle that's Lee like is. That's like your rent for the month. Bye -bye. It was. It's $107. You owe her $107. Oh, my God. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'm, you know, I've, it's amazing, though, that that's sort of, that was a great lesson for me, even just in my life and my career, the when, you know, to do random, to do nice things for people. And you never know how you're going to, you know, affect someone. So anyway, this has nothing to do with Knott's Landing, although actually kind of the more I think of it, it does. This it song. Does. So um, this is what I've sung this one time since 1980. And so, Michelle, this is uh, for you and all of you amazing, amazing women. We're going to go off so you can be alone with the woman. Let's get it sing and tango. Every time I've lost another lover I call up my old friend And I say, let's get together I'm under the weather Another love has come to an end And he listens as I tell him my sad story and wonders at my taste in men and we ponder why I do it and the pain of getting through it and he laughs and says you'll do it again and we sit in a bar and talk till two about life and love, as old friends do, and tell each other what we've been through. How love is rare and life is strange, nothing lasts and people change. And I ask him if his life is ever lonely and ever, ever feels despair. And he says he's learned to love it, cause that's really all part of it. And it helps him feel the good times when they're there. And we sit in a bar and talk till two about life and love as old friends do and tell each other what we've been through how love is rare and life is strange nothing lasts and people change And we wonder if I'll live with any lovers Or spend my life alone And the bartender is dozing It's getting time for closing And we figure that I'll go it on my own But we'll meet the heat we're 62 and we'll travel the world as old friends do and tell each other what we've been through how love is rare and life is strange nothing lasts and people change love is rare Life is strange, nothing lasts, and people change.
Oh, oh my gosh. We just play that. <laughs> the knots group in a pile. But after spending the evening with you all, you know, I, I'm so glad. I'm just so happy to sing that for you. And I, you know, when I saw you guys, I wanted to run up and put on sequins, but I didn't want to miss it. I started it. <laughs> We had to all go change. Oh, God. But well, Liz Calloway, I agree with, I. can we do this every week? The people, the comments are so <laughs> amazing. Uh, and thank you to everyone, by the way. The Actors Fund is so near and dear to me. Thank you to everyone who's been so generous in donating tonight. That means so much to so many people. So thank you all. And thank you guys for being here and, and doing this. Um, just a, a gift for all us very happy audience members. Absolutely. It's what everybody wants. Everyone wants our favorite TV stars to actually be friends in real life. And so Michelle Lee, to see that. I'm sorry, Seth. I agree, I agree with Angel. We need to have a part two. So Michelle yeah. Lee, that's that's the that's the plan, right? We'll have Ted Shackelford back. We'll make sure that his Wi-Fi is good. David Jake, basically everyone except for Donna and Joan need to get new laptops or new devices <laughs> yeah. and Wi-Fi. Yeah. That's what we've yeah. learned tonight. Did we win? The competitive one wants to know. Did we? Donna and Joan won. Donna no, and Joan I think won. Michelle. I think we all won. I yes, think I agree all with all you, Joan. Won. We all won. Big hug. We all won. This was special. This was totally special. Mm. <laughs> Michelle Lee, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. We're gonna shut up so you can talk now. We're gonna unmute you. Go ahead. You did it. I, no, I just wanted to say, are we, first of all. Liz, always. I mean, so special. Your voice. That song. And that song. That song. Is, but you know, guys, my girls, they know. Um, I got to tell you, so wonderful. And it was wonderful for us to be with you, Seth. And, and all the work you do. <laughs> yeah. well, we're all great. And hopefully in the near future, we'll have some good news. And we'll be out of a virus, and we'll be able to hold hands, and fly, and visit each other the way it used to be. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Michelle Lee, we're gonna just literally have on Streamyard not slanding. It'll stay there. So all the clips that we didn't get to, maybe you'll throw in a few more. Yeah, so when you come back, we'll have so them we ready. Come, come back and, and Donna um, Mills. People want to know if there's gonna be a sequel with you to play Misty for me. Jeez, oh. the whole thing's a sequel to play Misty for me. I don't know. I'll call Clint and ask him. I, <laughs> I'm not the sure. Okay. <laughs> We're just saying we want it. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone. This has been an amazing night. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle Lee, for organizing this. Wow. Everything. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Very special. Very special. We'll all see you again. <laughs> I'll play them out. Here. Play it, yeah. There you go.